All right, so just in case you guys are looking for the firing order for this particular vehicle, and that's the way it is. See the coil? Coil 2 controls coil 5. Coil 4 controls coil 1, uh, spark plug 1. And uh, coil 6 controls spark plug 3. And that's the firing order for this particular engine. So now that we know that we have a PO320, uh, let's go and uh, let's find out what is PO320. And you already know it's the sensor, but I want to show you guys what it really is. So we're gonna look at a little video and I'm gonna give him props, you know, because it's giving an ignition sensor failure and we're talking about an input failure. common problems that this has that means that if the ECM, ECU, or PCM detects a malfunction, no ignition is possible or the engine wouldn't start. But it is starting as you guys see, so it's detecting a spark, but it is detecting a misfire. So it's written kind of funny, it doesn't make a ton of sense, but um, I got us a little uh, you know, wire color chart here to see. Uh, what it is, uh, it says it's located next to the upper radiator hose and back of cylinder head, so let's have a look. So, we're talking about back what here. It, it's a little engine cover off, and it does appear, so we've got our thermostat housing there, it appears that it's this sensor right here. Um, so i got to take this cover off. It sits right down in there, just bolts it to the engine, and it says on it. Uh, we've got a ground an IGF, an IG plus, and a VB. So probably vehicle, battery, ignition plus, uh, IGF. And you see that sensor. You know, ignition feed or something, ground. So this one's IGF, going through the front. Uh, the old Toyotas, they used to have IGF and IGT signal. The IGF, I always remembered it as, I got fire. And IG, IGT right. was, I got. So I don't want to go and do the copyright thing and then get hit with copyright strikes. I just wanted you guys to see exactly what that PO uh, 320 is. And you guys saw me already when I told you guys I don't like the way this looks right here. Um, just do so that it's not clamped down. It's not where it's supposed to be at. Um, that is a problem. So we're going to take a look because I see a lot of zip ties um, all up in this front. And there's a big space. You know, there's a lot of things missing. So uh, let's rip this cover off and let's take a quick leak, a uh, quick peek. And this is where you can use tools like this. Why not? You know, make it a little bit faster, but <clears throat> tighten it down. No, man, don't do it that way. Use your hands. 
uh, use the ratchet that's what it's there for um, so I'm gonna loosen up these clamps I'm gonna remove this upper radiator hose so I'm gonna lose coolant and I really don't want to uh, play around with the coolant too much because the vehicle is still hot um, as you guys can see there's a leak somewhere right here so this is probably leaking over here for the customer and this is why he has to fill up um, as you can see it's going into the tube and feeding down there so this is another one another way out or another port um, I guess like a bleeder or something um, but you guys can see let me point the light so you guys take a better look I hate I hate these things it's one of my favorite things all right so take a look at that damage and it's mostly down down here so you guys get to see and you guys get to see the overspray so you already know that this right here has a leak um, if you're looking at the holes and everything over here um, the bottom radiator hose is going to have to be replaced very, very soon because it's rotting out, as you guys can see, all of that right there. Um, and as soon as I touch it, I'm pretty sure this thing is going to break apart. So I have to be very careful how I do this now because I may end up eating a hose. <coughs> so we got one screw up there. We got one screw right there. We got another screw right there. Um, if I'm correct, there's another screw right there, but I'm gonna loosen the top ones off and there should be another one somewhere. And look, 